get connected with Take Two Radio on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio. For email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit Take2Radio.com. Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome to Have You Heard, the latest in soap opera news from Take Two Radio. And I'm David, your host, and joining me tonight is the very lovely Belinda Gates Turner. And welcome, Thank Belinda. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and, David. Um, you're very welcome. I'm so pleased to have you here. Um, together, both of us together, have to send our regrets that Michael Thomas from Soap Opera News is unable to join us today. And hopefully he will be back on August 9th. That'll be great. So um, we have Belinda here, and she has loads of stuff to share with us today, and I'm going to try and go with the flow with her. So why don't you okay. just start right where you want to. All right. Uh, I think we should start with days because that's the one that I I struggle with the most. I am a converted watcher. Ron Carlovati has brought me over, but it's like walking into season six of Game of Thrones and trying to figure out, you know, <laughs> who's slept with who, who's murdered who, who's currently murdering someone. It's, it can't be easy. But um, it, so I was looking at some of the news on this, and it looks like Martha Madison and Brandon Beamer are going to be back on days. They're shooting now, which means we'll see them at Christmas because they shoot so far ahead of time. There has to be so much fun uh, shooting your Christmas scenes piled up in coats and whatnot for Salem when you're boiling in L.A. So Belle that and Sean them. are back. <laughs> and then Do we have a Sierra in the um, I there's I didn't see any news on Sierra. The, um, Matthew Ashford may be back as Jack. That's that's a rumor. The uh, the the Madison and Beamer news is firm, but the the Matt Ashford is is a rumor. So that's interesting. And I cannot pronounce this gentleman's last name because I have been watching the show that long. Jordy. Is it Villa Suso? Villa Suso. Yes. Ah, they, just like it reads, he is definitely out of there as as Dario. Dario? Dario? So I'm not going to bother getting to know him since he's leaving, and I just joined the show. But uh, I do love what I'm seeing from uh, from Ron Carlovati, so I, I'm definitely converted. Yep. I uh, I was there on day one, and so, I love the. Uh, I was just going to say I love the uh, the Marlena doppelganger thing he's got going, and uh, yeah. she was talking about bisexual disorder instead of bipolar disorder because she's a moron and it's, yeah. it's cute. I, I like oh. it. I Carlovati is funny. He is funny, so yes. I'm excited. He wants to so that, put that, a little more humor. He does. He, I mean, he does dark stuff sometimes, but he balances it out with with funnier, lighter stuff. And I, I, you know, I love him. I loved him on GH. A lot of people didn't, but I think uh, I think he's going to be good for the show. So that's all. That's I, my day's news. That's your day's news. I've got, that's my day's news. Now, I, in incremental order, I have some bold news, some and some more YR news, and I have a ton of GH news. So why don't we do bold next? Because that's my uh, that's the right. thing that I have next. Um, Lindsay Godfrey has been back, but it looks like that she's not sticking around. There's the whole she's dying lie that's going on, but I think the writing on the wall, everybody can see that. Thomas is going to stick with, with the redhead, and then because Lindsay Godfrey had said she wasn't going to be back, and then they called her, and brought her back, and it was supposed to just be a, for a short arc, so uh, she should be leaving soon, empty-handed. I mean, she'll have the kid, but she won't have Thomas. 
Um, which is good because her romantic prospects were Thomas, who's with Sally, and then Ridge, who's with, who's going to be with Quinn. We can kind of all tell where that's going. So I do like her brunette do though. What do you yeah. think about it? Have you noticed? Yeah, um, she's different with it. It's I'm so used to I'm so used to the blonde, but mm-hmm. you know it's a it's a cute look on her. It is very cute. It's very different. I like it. I like it. It's nice. Um, and then casting news over there um, for the the Monte Carlo slash Monaco trip. There's two people that are coming back. Uh, Kelly Kruger is going to be back as the the publicist Eva Eva Eva, um, and as we know, that's Darren Brooks' wife. And uh, Bold yeah. is pretty nice about letting spouses come along to these these trips. So and they're putting them to work. So that's good. <laughs> so she's going to be there. And then um, Gilles Marini, Gilles Marini is back. He's going to be playing a oh. doctor. So he's going to he be is, a doctor. He's playing a doctor. He is scheduled for. Friday the 28th and July 28th and um, Monday, July 31st. And I had written and hoped and suspected that he might be around. He's supposed to treat someone in the crew that's the, the, the group from uh, L.A. who's there. And I had been hoping that he was going to be a doctor who was going to tell us that Nicole is pregnant. Um, and then I saw a photo of one of his scenes and he's talking to Maya and Rick so maybe yeah. maybe because they are you know Nicole adjacent so um, that's that's what I've got fingers crossed for but he's going to have just the, the two episodes and he was real excited about it he's he's you know I think the first time he showed up he was a waiter and then something else but he likes it and he's got family over there so he loves doing the, uh, the Monte Carlo shoots well, how about so he's going to be in the Monte Carlo scenes? Mhm. Yep. How about as Doctor Doctor Monjour or something French? I'm sure, but I haven't seen the character name yet. Just Doctor. Hmm. So there's so that's to look forward to too. Yeah, I like him. He's a lot of fun. <clears throat> Skipping over to a uh, Young and the Restless. <laughs> CBS cracks me up with their their casting crossovers <clears throat> not only will they take characters you know from uh, Genoa City and bring them to LA and vice versa but they will bring in people from their other shows particularly their reality shows uh, Debbie Warner I don't know if you watch Survivor <clears throat> but uh, Debbie is this yeah. in- insane character I'm sorry um, what was her name again uh, Debbie Warner. She is. If you've ever seen her on Survivor, you wouldn't forget her. She is. She's. She says she's been everything: a military instructor, a horse whisperer, you know, a ninja, a weightlifter, an astronaut. <laughs> she. At any career you mention, she says she's done it. <laughs> she's really funny and um, kind of a nut. And she was on. She was on Bald and the Beautiful. She's been on there twice as a as a chef. She showed up once doing breakfast in Bill Spencer's office, and then she showed up for another event, and they'll always ask her how long she's been a chef, and she'll say she's been a chef and a horse whisperer. She, she makes fun of herself. She lists off all her, you know, her various careers that she's claimed. Um, and they had two of the guys uh, last year, James, and I can't remember who else, from um, Survivor, uh, they showed up at Crimson Lights over on Young and the Restless. So they they do bring hmm, kind yeah. of the some of them over. Well, anyway, so if you watch Big Brother, there's this guy. He's a professional wrestler, but he goes by Mr. Pectacular because he was a yes. a Big Brother contestant at one time. Well, he always shows up on Big Brother every year and shows off his pecs. He is going to be on The Young and the Restless. So CBS is at it again, bringing him over. And he's a big ham. It's a lot of fun. So they just, you know, I have to give him credit for for cross promotion. That's the way to do it. 
Uh, his real name is Jesse Goddard, but uh, and he's going to be in a scene with uh, with Noah and with Tessa, uh, and he's going to be August fourth. So he's got just a little thing. He's a security oh. guard at this at this musical festival. They're they're going to. So it's just a one off, but you know it's kind of fun stuff. Um, CBS, like I said, they love to do that. Kind of the interesting Y&R thing I have. So Greg Rickard and Elizabeth Hendrickson were done last week as Chloe and Kevin. And I don't know how you felt about this, but it was like, come? oh, they're yeah, they're gone. Yeah, and it's like, that's it. That was it. No fanfare. They were. They told Victor, Victor's, I'm your worst nightmare when he knocks at the door. And then he, they're like, we won't say anything. And he's like, okay, bye. And yeah, because I was like, I was expecting I, a little I, more, maybe. I was expecting maybe the crazy doctor that thinks Chloe is his daughter to show up and like try to murder them or something, and nothing. And it's like the doctor's gone, they're gone, yeah, and everything was confirmed, like they're done. And it was like they literally went out with a whimper and not a bang, which is a huge letdown for you know two great characters. Um, but yeah. so. The, the latest rumor is that they've asked Greg Rickard to come back. Not they did not contract. Yeah, yeah, to come back and do a little bit of recurring stuff. So yeah, no word yet if he if he will, but he probably will. You know, he hasn't said that he's got a new project right now. He's at loose ends. So yeah, they want him back to do a little something as Kevin. So all that. You know, big kerfuffle, and there he is. He's back again. Um, I, yeah, I thought it was a... Tie him up. He's probably got what? Tie up. Yeah. Give him a little more meat to the story and Something. maybe to add maybe, to maybe. Yeah, I, it was really strange because it was like I really was expecting more scenes, and then it was like, yep, they're done, and it was like, Wow, the, the fact that they had to tell us, it was like, hmm. So I, I thought it was a very weak send off. You know, they didn't have to blow and them what, up. Or Go ahead. Well, um, it, it, it was strange. You sure that's it, though? Yeah, yeah. It's it. It, 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 it's a proper digest. Because it's at August, that's why. Or what? Yeah, that that's what everybody has been expecting because they said that their last scenes were going to be in August. I mean, granted, we're bumping up against August right now, but they were gone last week. I mean, yeah. that's firmly July. Them, so Digest confirmed it. So it's not just speculation or, you know, set insider huh. stuff. It's actually confirmed. Yeah, it is. So um, is. there's someone new, someone new starting on YR also – Morgan, I'm going to guess her pronunciation, Oben Reader. Oh. Oben Reader, Oben Reader. She's going to be Reader, playing yeah. Crystal. Yeah, she's going to be the, she's the girl that called in to talk to Sharon at the crisis hotline. And she's the victim of the sex trafficking ring. Um, that's going to kick off soon. And I actually just did a piece about this. You can check me out at Twitter at Belinda, G-T-B-E-L-Y-N-D-A. I am 99% sure that Creepy Zach is involved in this and that app, that dating app of his is a dating app is is human trafficking. Oh, I think the app, their concierge service, I think one of their services is getting unwilling people to molest. I think that's like that that's the premium app i'm i'm guessing but uh, i wrote about that abby is unwittingly funding human trafficking and victor's going to have another kid to disown pretty soon but uh so it'll be interesting so it looks like she's not going to be we're going to have about another week and then we should actually get to lay eyes on the new actress and tessa's tied in oh, this that's and fun. yeah I'm she's, pretty there's sure. a little more than just her thing I think so. I'm pretty sure. Um, One thing I know for sure is that there's always a reason to bring them on, even if you don't see it 
for a while. They're probably still building. Exactly. And they don't want to let her reaction. You know. Yeah, yeah, and her reaction when she first saw Zach in town was like, oh, and she was scared. And it's like, well, yeah. he doesn't look scary, but yeah, I think he's I think he's a bad dude. He's an interesting casting choice. He was on the um I think the uh in the Divergent movies. So, he was a he's a plum little actor they brought in. He's not a throwaway. So, there's definitely more to come from from him. So, that's exciting. My last piece of Young and the Restless news, and this this is not even news. I can't even call it news. Um, it is rumor tied to spoiler and my gut. Um, I hate to even say the two words, Adam Newman. <laughs> oh, there's that it. one it's web- okay. that I know. There's that one website that I won't mention that has him resurrected literally five, seven, nine times a week, they write an article with him resurrecting. And, you know, I joked the other day, I said, he's, you know, come back for revenge. He's impregnating Victor. He's doing this. He's doing that. It's, it's Michael Muni. It's not Michael Muni. It's Justin Hartley. It's not, you know. But <laughs> there is, um, and if you're a Soap Opera Digest digital subscriber, you might have gotten a little treat on Friday. I did. Uh, they accidentally released two weeks of magazines on Friday. Uh, they released that? the one for this week. Yeah, they released the one for this week. And the they digital accidentally release. released the one for this Yeah, only the digital. They didn't go mailing out the hard copies, but, you know, it's programming, it's code. Somebody hit the wrong button because uh, – I was looking at my one, and I was like, oh, that's cool. And then there was a second one in my digital queue, and I was like, that's interesting. And I opened it up, and I downloaded it real quick before they realized their error <laughs> and deleted it off their server. So um, the spoiler is that Nick and Chelsea meet a mysterious stranger. Yeah. That's, that, that sounds like nothing, but Nick and Chelsea oh. have nothing going on right now. Really, you know, um, really if just... Adam was back, yeah, they're just doing their thing. If Adam wandered back into Genoa City, that's who he would head for is Chelsea and would be surprised to see her with his brother, I'm sure. So that hmm. that's definitely in the rumor category, but it tickled my my soap spidey senses. And so I uh, I wrote about it. It's tickling yours, right? It's tickling mine, and I got something to tickle back yeah. with it. Would you yeah, like to hear? Mysterious. Well, this is a little yeah. tidbit I found over the night. Well, okay. um, probably saw on Soul Pub, but one of the former actors on YNR, his name was Andre Cabazzi. He was used to play Alec Moretti back about 20 years ago. Um, He was with Trisha Dennison, and then he went with Megan, her sister Megan Dennison, and before Megan went to Tony. Um, He he spouted off on his Instagram about Young and the Restless recently. Ah. And I'm not sure, and every... And it's got some fans, and even a former castmate, Sabrina Janae, who played, who played Trisha Dennison at the time, thinking that he's going back to Young and the Restless. Hmm. You have to check ah, out his Instagram. Okay. I I'm sitting okay, here, and, you, and it says some, something big is about to go down. Getting excited. And he hashtag yeah. Young and the Restless. Wow. Yes. That is yeah. very exciting. Oh. So with that rumor that you just read off, uh huh. I wonder if he's the mysterious stranger. Ah. There you go. Yeah, it's one of those. It, it tickled. It tickled my brain, and it was like, okay, somebody's coming back, and Jamie Giddens. Um, from Daytime Confidential does get, you know, good stuff. And he he 
said in May that they were holding Adam auditions, and there were at and least three actors over. It. Yeah, and and so with and what I just wrote was that the timeline of late May auditions, hiring somebody, bringing them in to shoot, the tape lag, that it's the right time. But yeah, maybe it's this guy. Either one is exciting. I'm one. Um, he is a good actor. He was you, just underused at the time back then. Yeah. They were gonna they were gonna fix him up with Heather Tom. I they they were testing him with Heather Tom back then too, so I remember Alec working ball. So I wonder if he is coming back who they're gonna have him with. That would be very interesting. Well, so the one thing I want the one, the ones that we see that we know that have uh-huh. tried out. Okay, we know Jason Gerhardt, formerly Coop from right. General Hospital. And Mr. Yeah. All right. Um he is I my my suggestion a little old for the role. He's the same age as Joshua. And I think my my opinion the the actor should at least look younger. Right. Than Josh, and that's why Justin pulled it off so well. Yeah, and then there was Jason Shane Scott. Yeah, he is younger. Scott is is the same age as Josh too. Yeah, he's a cutie. He he looks a little younger. Of the two, he's he's my favorite. (sighs) There was a. Third, but I he, he is didn't. I, you know, you know who he's dating. Uh, yeah, Jason Shane Scott. Yeah, he's dating Justin's ex-wife, Lindsay. Yeah, Lindsay Hartley is that her name? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. They're uh, they're working on a movie together because I've been keeping an eye on both of their Instagram feeds just to see if something cropped up that made it look like they were in Genoa City doing stuff. So, you know, it's one of those. <laughs> Adam is like the uh, the Loch Ness Monster, you know. We hear about him and <laughs> we talk about him, but you no know, one's seen him. So it wouldn't be a bad time to bring him back. But, and it's funny because, yep. uh, you know, uh, yeah, and on social media people are saying, oh, you know, YNR said they're not bringing him back. Sally Sussman says she's not bringing him back. And it's like, yeah. Sally Sussman said, no Phyllis and Billy together. Guess what we see every day? <laughs> because that's what Mel Young well, wanted. That you think it's more EP? Yeah. Because they, on the level, the head writer will pitch the ball to the EP, and the EP will approve, get approval from network, from what they want, from what she pitched. Right. Is that how you see it? Um, yeah. You think, is I that mean, the and I, and I, I, I think nine times out of ten it is, but then I think in some cases where the e, the EP comes down, you know, the pipeline down the hall on the phone and says, I want this, and they have to say, okay. If he's going to pass to the network okay. and it's what he wants, they have to say, okay, they have to do it. I mean, we see it all the time at General Hospital because Frank Valentini and Nathan Varney, we know, are very heavy-handed with the writers yeah. over there. Um, and, you know, Mal Young is new, and I, we see things happening that Sally Sussman said in her, in her, you know, interview as she was taking the job, things yep. she didn't want to do, and they're happening. So that means it's Mal. Yeah. And, you know, we talked – Last week about the ratings, you know, they have to yes. to follow the ratings, and Adam coming back is ratings, no matter who it is. Adam? It's, yeah, if Adam comes back, yeah. the rating, you know. It's going to soar. The ratings go, yeah, oh, of course. I mean, this whole Steve Burton thing over General Hospital, 
that's all it is. It's the numbers. So we'll see. It's I mean, it's, thing, it's Monday. And I think Go it's ahead. more than just what Ma wants. Ma's looking at what what gets most um, people talking. And whether it's right. bad or good, most people are talking about Phyllis and Billy. That's it. That's just oh, yeah. it. And I don't. And I don't think. I don't think some of our people that we see online understand that aspect. Oh yeah, I think that definitely people have tunnel vision about what they like, and they're not thinking about the the ecosystem of the whole soap because I, I I think I said this last time that I see people and I'm like, they're like, why are they doing this? And I, and I say ratings and they say, they say, what do you mean ratings? I'm like, the ratings are down. And they're like, down, how can they be down? They think because they're still watching <laughs> that the ratings are fine. <laughs> they don't comprehend the whole yeah, how I big picture. You'll hear me tweet that yeah. a lot. I'll tweet that. All the no- I says I may not like everything I see, but I still watch. But I still watch, yeah, because I don't want to lose them, and you know, and some people fast forward through the show, and it's like that's actually fine, as long as you're watching it the same day or within 24 hours on the app, on the official app, or off your DVR or off on demand, it still gets counted, even if you fast forward past the stuff you don't like. Which I don't fast forward past the stuff I don't like. I might pet my dog and eat some oatmeal, but I still, yep. I still watch it all. <laughs> um, so, but, so it's, it's Monday that Mysterious Stranger shows up, which means oh, it's Monday. we'll know. F- it's Monday. It's the 31st. Yeah. So that means we'll know Friday because the Canadians will let it slip. But what I am kind of expecting is, that it's going to be someone in the shadows or a pair of hands or somebody in a hoodie or, you know, where we, mysterious stranger, we may not see mysterious stranger's face, you know, we may just note their presence. The other spoiler that tickled me that I I wondered if was tied to this, but maybe not, is that um, Jack and Nikki are at the Abbott cabin canoodling and someone takes photos of them and the spoiler, and this again was from that early release magazine, said that um, the it's a, the peeping Tom is looking is spying on other people, not just them. Oh, that so mysterious does that tickle anything stranger. To you? Well, the, is, the two is are tied. Jack and Nick. It, the, the spoilers were separate. So there was Nikki and. Uh, Nick and Chelsea meet a mysterious stranger, and then the other spoiler was a peeping Tom takes photos of uh, Jack and Nikki, and they are not the only pers- the only people that are being spied on by this peeping Tom. So they may not be related at all. It may be situation A, situation B, or it may be Adam back from the dead, and he's getting the lay of the land by – stalking all his favorite people because he and Jack were really close and that's, you know, his stepmother. Uh, yeah. They may not, they may be completely unrelated, but that one tickled my brain also, so I've got it simmering on the back burner. <laughs> but we'll know Friday. A little bit about Mysterious Stranger and then oh, I'm assuming Friday. more next week. Hmm. <laughs> So we'll see. Um, Going over to General Hospital, James DePiva is not done. Um, Oh, he's not. He is not, I know. (laughs) He showed up as Dr. Bench, which is like the worst soap name ever, you know. I don't even know, were they like bored and looked in the hall? They were like, Bench, we'll call him Bench. (laughs) <laughs> I just thought that was so terrible. <laughs> Give him a you know a dramatic soap name, you know Antonio Rodrigo or Doctor Haas and Pepper, but it was you know Doctor Bench. So Doctor Bench is back. Um, you'll see in this week's soap magazine some photos of him 
in his lab coat at the hospital talking to people. So he's around. Uh, but I don't – Sam's getting diagnosed, and she's going to get on antibiotics. It is toxoplasmosis, by the way. I actually – blogged that and uh, I got a lot of hate piled on me. <laughs> you got I can't tell you how many people you pop- get- Well because because I said it's definitely because at first I said I think it's meningitis and they're like Ugh, and then I said no no because I came across I stumbled across the source and I said no no it, it's it's toxoplasmosis and it actually causes toxoplasmosis encephalitis and it's caused by a parasite called toxoplasmosis gondii and everybody was like they don't have a cat she's not touching cat litter and I had to tell people that's <laughs> not the only way that you get it that's the pamphlet they hand you at the OBGYN because that's how most people get it but she gave birth in this fetid you know culvert after her lovely aunt kicked her down the thing and you know <laughs> So there was all kinds of grimies, and I, as I wrote, the giving birth is like a gaping open wound. And although, if you remember, she gave birth apparently through her jeans because her pants never came off. So I don't know, she was in birthing jeans or something. Uh, but it is definitely yeah, toxic. And it was, She's it was, getting her. It, it was wasn't uh, damaged. Yeah, no, it was it was gross, and the, the basically animal feces of all types carry it. It's just that as civilized humans, we don't have the only animal feces we really handle day to day is cat poo. We don't like go out and pick up cow patties and stuff. But it's it's in a lot of animal feces, and so she was in this nasty culvert. So she's gonna be diagnosed with toxoplasmosis encephalitis, which does inflame your brain and make you nuts. So. Um, Scout may have picked it up The good news is it's antibiotics And this secondary drug that has a long name That I didn't care enough to include in the article But um, I don't know if Dr. Bench is involved In her treatment It looks like Finn and Griffin are all over it They were swapping paperwork today And Finn does infectious diseases Because he did the the brain worms For Tracy So Right So Dr. Bench is off the bench that he's been warming, and he'll be back uh, within the next couple of weeks. Doing what I don't know. I hope they didn't bring him back just for nothing. <laughs> That'd I be a real waste. Him to stay. Yeah, I mean, at least when they brought like Hillary B. Smith over, you know, she had. We knew we could tell there was an arc. It was a defined arc. She's going to do this case for Valentine, yeah. and then she's going to be gone, and that's fine. And he just showed up, and it was like, oh. And then they kind of talked about him, and then he hasn't been around. So we will see. Um, Bradford Anderson is back on set shooting as Spinelli. So we'll see him soonish. And I think everybody was pretty floored with the, the spoiler and then the reality that hit today with uh, Kirsten Storm's back. And it's like, yay, she's back. And then Maxie was like, I'm just here for a layover. And she's That's leaving. <laughs> oh no! It wasn't that bizarre. It was just so. I don't know if she came in. Did and, I miss that completely? Some people. Yeah, yeah, because she I'm, showed up at the rib, and she and she told Nathan, "Ah, oh, I have a three-hour layover, which you can't even get through security and all that." But I'm not even going to go there with a three-hour layover. But I'm going to let that part go. <laughs> And they were going to run off and have some nookie at the apartment. Then they ran into into her parents. And, um, yeah, so she was, like, on her way to Paris to a fashion conference. So uh, some of the scuttle that I saw was that she showed up to shoot for a few days, and then they had their they, – they shut down for three weeks right. for the, okay. their annual – summer break. So some of what I heard was that maybe she came in and based on her shooting schedule and then the break, they didn't want to get into anything. So they just brought her back for the little hoorah moment and then she'll be back. She's not going anywhere. She's definitely back. And she looks phenomenal. What do you think? Uh, She looks, she looks amazing. 
She looks like the maxi of old, her little round face that you just want to squish in your hand. She had gotten so gaunt and so bony and, oh, my gosh, she looks beautiful. She's put on, she has to put on 15 pounds, 20 pounds, good weight. She needed it. She looks beautiful. So I'm thrilled. So I'm let me see. Bradford's back. back. Yeah, and the uh, the the pictures on set were of her with Bradford Anderson. So it'll be so Maxie and Spinelli will have scenes. Um, Nicholas Vestal is gone off the set. He's done shooting yeah. for his summer break. Yeah, he uh, he pa- he posted a, an IG picture uh, like a week and a half ago of him exiting with balloons and said he was done because he shows up for summer break because he's on a hiatus from his Disney shows that he shoots. This kid works year-round. Oh. He's a, he is a machine. So he's done at GH, and I think, you know, we saw he's done with his kidnapping. He's semi you know, he's got a detente going with his Uncle Valentine, and I'm assuming he's going to be shipped back to boarding school next week, this week, next week. But he's done. Um, yeah. He and is then, such a cute little guy. He is. And I, uh, I have a teenager who does anything he can to avoid watching soaps, but he happened to be in the room today when uh, when Nicholas did the line, my name is Spencer Cassadine, you killed my father, prepare to die. <laughs> when he yeah. quoted Princess Bride. <laughs> <laughs> we, he actually laughed out loud. He's like, that's the funniest thing I've ever seen on any of your soap operas. <laughs> 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 so I appreciated that. I don't know. Who, which writer in the writer's room put the, you know, the uh, the homage to Inigo Montoya in there, but that was a, a lovely piece of dialogue. I loved it. That was, that was they, classic Spencer, too. Yeah, it was, because he's, he's so, literally so theatrical. Um, that's one of the things with with the jelly writing team that I don't I don't think they have a firm grasp on is humor. <laughs> or romance, honestly, if I'm being honest, I think all they really do is write illness, tragedy, violence, you know. I cuz there's not a lot of romance going on right now either, so. There is Speaking now. of romance though. There's not. There's not Hayden Finn they they smooched and you know, but there is romance coming. Yeah, they have the baby coming. Well, there's more. There's big romance coming because Roger Howarth is back on set shooting, and that means he he came back this week to shoot. So that means this time next month we have a frizz reunion, which I think we can all expect to be smoking hot. Oh yeah. So, I uh, I love him. Yeah. I'm so excited that that they they kept him. And Roger is Roger is one of the sweetest guys I've met in the business. Yes. I've heard wonderful things about him. He loves his. And uh, you know he he loves. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm done. Oh, you're saying he loves. His, yeah, he's not on. I, the other thing I like about him, actually, is interesting. You know, he's not on social media, but he shows up yep. to the events. He shows up to the events, and he's real sweet. Um, he just doesn't do. Billy Miller doesn't do it either. You know, he won't. No. He is. I, I love that there's a photo of Billy Miller where he, he's holding up a sign and it says, I love all of you, but not enough to get on Twitter, <laughs> not enough to join Twitter. Yep, I remember that. He just refuses. And and he's staying. He signed a new contract is the the big news of the week. He is 
one of he is one of Frank's big surprises, isn't he? Yeah, so he's staying, and he's Jason, and then Burton is back, and there there has been two different sources that, that I rely on that both have contacts on set, and they have each said that he's coming back as Jason, but then in... I think it was, I don't remember which of the two episode issues of Soap Digest that, that came out. Um, there was a writer yeah, interview yeah, yeah. with Jean. It was Jean and Shelley both, I think. And it was, a, it was a short, it was at the very front of the magazine, and it wasn't a full-page thing. It was like one of those half-page cutouts that was like in like an orange box. And what she said was that, it will it will be remarked upon the resemblance that this character has to Jason, to old Jason. She said it will not go unnoticed. But see, that's that's drastically yeah. different than him being Jason. Mm-hmm. So that was very interesting, unless they told her to fib and say that. <laughs> You never um, know these days. You don't. I am passionately hoping that they are doing with him what they did with when they brought back Sarah Brown. Because she was great as Carly yeah. and she was great as Claudia Zakara. Right. So I, I'm hoping that Burton is maybe a rival mobster coming in to take over the power vacuum left by Sonny's imminent retirement once he gets out of the hole. <laughs> yeah. That that's I, a possible uh, but do you think it it is. Do you think it's gonna go the twin thing? I passionately hope not because these these writers love to twist history and retell stories and change things and do retcons and it makes the fans mad and they went to all the trouble to explain how Billy Miller's Jake Doe is Jason Morgan Spinelli had the facial reconstructor thing where it took his bones and all that he's got the the surgical scars in his brain from his brain surgeries he has the DNA match. They did the facial reconstruction match. They've done everything. If it was just one thing, like if it was just the DNA, you could say, oh, Helena changed that because it came from the prison system. But they right. went, they did a whole bunch of stuff. They did so much to justify it, which was funny because you know, everybody figured out, oh, that's Jason, you know, six months before the show actually admitted it. Um, Right. But they did so much work. And so if they unravel that, but they might. <laughs> so how can we overlook, and I have to admit, Casey brought this up on one of our live shows before, you know, before you joined, um, mm-hmm. that he sort of justified he sort of justified the two year difference between um that maybe Jason wasn't at Crichton Clark all that long and maybe he did make it over there and so I don't know what to believe it, so I mean yeah. I have to think cuz he has, because he looks at it cuz the character of Jason hasn't been on for two years right so and this Jason, can happen in years. Exactly. And this Jason is very different from Stone Cold. He's very yeah. different. He's a different guy. And you can blame that on Ava giving him an attitude adjustment with her front fender, you know, or yeah. <laughs> like literally not yeah. some sense into him, or he's a twin. And there and and I wrote, you know, cuz I, I I've written I've written about it both ways. I'm like, if if he's not Jason, this is who he could be, and I listed off a few things. The funniest thing that I saw on social media was people saying, he could be AJ, and it's like, 
why and how? <laughs> no. Why? <laughs> why I dig that up? Um, but yeah, he because Heather Weber said that they were twins, that there were twins, and right. that one was sold. Right. So. They could be identical twins, and that would explain the facial match. That would explain the DNA match. It would explain all of that, and it would explain why, you know. And he could even come to town like Jake Doe, not knowing who he really is, because I can't imagine freezing agrees with your your gray matter, you know. <laughs> maybe his cranium is yeah. still thawing. Yeah. Or maybe he knows who he is and he's lying, you know. I don't know. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm not sure, sure what to believe. I mean, I saw that we keep talking about that that same Twitter feed about that one saying trying to tell Gene how to write. And it says, <laughs> we know. And, 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 that, and Gene asks, how do you know? It says, because we watched. Yeah, we've been we watched watching it. <laughs> but and they buried her in, in a way. Clip. I don't know. They They're showed like, her the a video is, clip. Why don't you, yeah, and it's like the question is, why don't you know? <laughs> That's the bigger question. I, You know, personally, me personally, I would prefer if they went the Claudia Zakara, Sarah Brown route. That's, that's just me at my gut because I hate evil twin stories. I think they are an overdone trope, you know, and I think it would be – interesting for him to be someone else but still be Steve Burton because I do love Steve Burton. I liked him as Dylan. I like I always liked him on GH. I liked him in The Castle. I don't know if you remember him from that movie. Uh, but I'm a fan. I, I don't really care yeah, was, what – And so what are you hoping? Um, something to surprise me like that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, something to surprise. Because the twin I'm expecting, so I want to be surprised. Right, right. And my overarching commentary on all the posts I've written about this, and I've written several, is just do it well. Do it well, and I don't care what it is. You know, don't crap it up. Don't crap up the history anymore. Make it plausible. Make it good. I'll keep watching. It's fine. So. Yeah, I'll keep watching. Um, okay. I'll keep watching. Let's see. Yeah, of course. I mean, I'm going to keep watching. And, I, and that, that's the other thing. If he's not Jason, I'm going to quit watching. It's like, no, you're not. Whatever. <laughs> and if you do, you're not a fan. You know, that's a fair weather fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other exit, okay, Rebecca Buttig is out soon. Yes, because, uh, yeah, because right before they went dark, um, she finished her last finished. scene. So she's like I, I keep waiting. I'm like I'm like waiting for the kernel of you know, the little nugget of information that'll tell me how they're gonna exit her. I mean, obviously it's Obracht and this ex husband of hers, this shady ex of hers. But the the prevailing thing that I've seen is that they're not killing her off. That's a good thing. And the, yeah, they're not killing her off, and Michael Easton is staying because there's been a lot of scuttlebutt that he's going. And from all the resources I've seen, he is staying for now. You know, you never know what's going to happen in the future, but he's yeah. staying now. She's leaving. She's leaving soon. She's leaving pregnant. I have read that there will be no miscarriage. Oh. So that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, everybody was thinking, oh. why would she leave pregnant with his baby? But, you know, leaving pregnant with his baby is really kind of an awful thing to do. So in terms of drama, yeah. I mean, there's nothing worse in life than lack of closure. So that yeah, could push well, him off the wagon. They could bring her back. They could, and, you know, it may be one of those things that they're deliberately leaving it open-ended because there's not enough Webbers around, and they're, you know, one of the founding families. And Liz will be back to being on her own other than, you know, Grams that gets the mention. 
So I do find it interesting she's leaving with the baby, and I'm wondering if they're going to have Finn do a relapse. That could be happening, you know. I can't imagine he'll take it well. Uh, Kathleen Gotti. If he relapses when she leaves? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would think that losing, because he's proposing to her very soon, and she's going to accept, and then she finds out about Jared, the ex, and then, you know, hilarity ensues. Uh, So, yeah, I would be surprised if he didn't fall off the wagon a little bit, but we'll see. Uh, One of the things that I thought was coming and I'd seen some things about was that Kathleen Gotti would be exiting, you know, there was some, that site that writes fan fiction (laughs) had this whole thing about her kidnapping Liz. And it was like, why would she kidnap Liz? Liz is going to be kidnapped this week, but it's going to be Garvey because he needs medical attention. Um, But that has nothing to do with Obrecht. And so the whole assumption was based on Rebecca Betty. So Liz Hmm? Liz is, oh, I'm sorry. Liz's kidnapping no, has nothing to, for Hayden? Nothing. Nothing on nothing Hayden? Nothing at all. No, really? no, it has it That's what zero I thought zip it to do with it. I'm, yeah. No, Garvey got shot by Sonny at the uh, right, yeah. construction site, and he's bleeding, and he needs medical attention, so he's going to creep around GH, and he's going to snatch the first convenient nurse, which is Liz, and Carly is going to come upon them and save Liz because she knows who Garvey is because she saw him down in Puerto Rico. So she'll know precisely mm. who he is. And yeah. And, cause see, and then Garvey winds up at GH after and is admitted and has emergency surgery after trying to unsuccessfully snatch Liz. And he tells Carly that Sonny is dead. So. That um, that should be interesting because no one's going to have seen him. He's going to stay in that pit. I, I actually tweeted something huh. kind of mean and funny. I don't know if you saw my Twitter feed. I, I didn't see it. Tweeted that. a picture. Uh, I had tweeted a picture of Buffalo Bill with the it puts the lotion in the basket because <laughs> Sonny's down in a pit. You know, it, it just had that get, that uh that Silence of the Lambs feel. You know, I want Sam to come back and put lotion in a basket and give it to him. But he's going to be down there a few days. Oh. But, yeah, the, so Liz Liz has nothing to do with Obrecht. Anyway, Kathleen Gotti tweeted that she is staying on as recurring. She did tweet that? She's going to... She did. She's staying. Okay. There was a lot of, yeah, there was a lot of assumption that based on Hayden's exit and knowing that Obrecht is the architect of her exit that she would be exiting also either because Finn choked the life out of her or she was arrested again or, you know, something. But she says she's saying um, there have been people tweeting concern and different things, and she's been liking and retweeting things, but she hasn't said anything, and then maybe GH told her that she could because they probably got tired of phone calls about it. (laughs) She's a lot of fun. I really like her. I, I, I'm glad she's staying. Yeah, she is too. She is, she is the sweetest woman. We we uh, oh. Pam and I were fortunate enough to get an interview with her on her first year at GH, and she was really. That was back in thirteen. Yeah. Yeah, she's really sweet. So yeah, she's phenomenal, I'm, very talented, and I, I love they brought her in for you know a fifteen minute little thing and then kept her going on four years now. Yeah, four years already. She's a, I can't believe it. Yeah, yeah, she's and I especially love her at Christmas with her Krampus stuff and at the nurses ball stealing the show and yeah yeah she's just. She's a lot of fun. I'm glad that she's staying. So, I mean, you know, the overwhelming thing on GH is Burton. 
So there, mm-hmm. there's still – I have not seen a firm air date. There's been some blogs from some sites that, you know, knit fiction that <laughs> have said, you know, Burton's air date revealed. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not, not and I'm sure there will be. Yeah, they'll do it when they want to, and it's going to be fanfare and, you know, promos and countdown to Burton, and, you know, I'm sure they're going to milk it so that everybody starts watching. And so I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Yeah? Are you not watching now? No, I I, I am, but I'll keep. I'm. I keep watching. I like Steve. I mean, it doesn't I matter do what he's in as long as he's doing it and doing yeah, it well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And and he will. And yeah, I like I said, I I really like the idea of him. Not, and and you know, there's lots they could do. They could actually do both. They could bring him in as a new character, and then later it turns out he's Jason because he's got amnesia from being a popsicle for years, you know, Mm -hmm. because Helena died and he could have just been left in the freezer somewhere and someone finally came by and unplugged it and thought him out, you know. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's true. And the thing is that Robin was there. Yeah. And she knows. Right. She's pretty sure. So I don't know. Well, I mean, the other the other problem is is that J- Jake Doe slash Billy Miller Jason has memories. He's he doesn't he have them all, memories. but but he's recovered a lot of them, and it's like, how do you unwrite that? You know, we're gonna go back to it was face on, and yeah. it was brainwashing, and it was. Yeah. You know, General so, Hospital loves their science just like fiction. One life to live. <laughs> just like one life to live. Yeah, oh yeah. So we'll see. The other thing on uh, Roger Howarth's return uh, that I thought was interesting was the excuse they gave for why Franco was gone. There that is an excuse. Ex- oh, why? Because... Uh, Liz explained it to Hayden because she had asked her, and he is supposedly in in New York because when he was a full-fledged, I guess after he was outed as a serial killer, he he got sued or whatnot, and his estate, because he was wealthy because he was this very yeah. famous artist. Yeah, yeah, so he's wealthy, and he has yeah, he, was. he was wealthy. And he has all this artwork that he's done that's worth a, a ton of money, and it was all like tied up in court proceedings and civil suits for damages and things. So she mentioned that he went to see about unraveling that because the last job he had was a general hospital parking attendant. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Which not glamorous, but funny. Um, so I wonder if they're going to – you know, just drop all the money problems and he's going to say that he got back part of it so he can afford to be an art therapist again and, you know, volunteer or whatever, you know. So right. I don't think people were necessarily yeah, that sounds, feeling... That sounds viable to me. Yeah, I, I hope they, they do. Need a, you know, kind of they need a good reason to, um, you know... Writers have to have a good reason why they kept him off, as much as why they yeah. bring, as as what why they have them on. Exactly, and that you know, so that was the the little short explanation. I haven't. I hate to admit that it's grown on me, but the plot that they hastily cobbled together for Ryan Pavey with this Ask Man Landers thing. Mm-hmm. The stupid thing has grown on me. <laughs> um, where I like it's that in, Nathan. Intriguing. Yeah, well, and especially because Nathan himself has now turned into sort of this advice-giving love guru. He's not just 
taking credit for Amy's stuff. He's now legit handing out advice, and the whole thing with Mac quoting Ask Man Landers was really funny. Oh, I couldn't believe that. What a twist. Yeah, that he's got the lingerie and that he's quoting. And then, well, do you know what did bother me was the gratuitous flashback where Nathan is like recalling what he said. And it's like, do they think that we don't watch or that we have the, the recall of, you know, three year olds, whatever? So, um, but I, I did enjoy that. That yeah, is good. Any news about. Um, more, more vets coming back. We know. That oh wait, I do list. know one. Okay. Fanola is going on vacation. Yeah, her that annual summer maybe. vacation. Yeah, because she's a. Uh, that was the whole purpose of the phone call today, where Robin went into labor, because. What Fanola does is she tacks her vacation onto their when they go dark in the summer, and she usually takes like an extra three, four months off. Uh, last year she was shooting a film with a – well, not three, I'm sorry, extra three or four weeks. But last year she took more. She took a total of I think close to two months by the time all was said and done because she was shooting a movie with Ian Buchanan. Uh, that right. she was directing, um, that they're they're still working on editing. Ian Buchanan is on the on the sixteenth, August sixteenth. He is back to bald, and I'm real excited about that. I know we talked about it last time, but now we have the date. It's August sixteenth. Hmm. Yeah, so he's simple. coming back to die. Yeah, he's What's coming that? back to. At Eric's request to um, diagnose Psycho Sheila. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. So. Well, it'll looks be like good. Sheila. Yeah, it looks like Sheila and Eric are still hanging out. She snuck in a kiss and all that. I'm I'm enjoying Kimberly and Brown being back. I know some people are on the fence about it, but I'm enjoying it. Uh, yeah, she's. It's very. Um introspective and she's keeping she's keeping her the top of her kettle on for now yeah she's not full blown crazy yet she's moderately nuts which is nice I mean she's because if she came back and she was you know completely sane and normal and wasn't twitching you know that wouldn't be any fun either so Let me see if I have any other news on my list. Frank had a whole list. Who had a whole list? Frank. Oh, my God. Ah. He's just just like giving it out like candy. (laughs) Did you see that blurb? No, no. Okay, what did he say? All right, well, he's got another big return coming, and they want to, he's not giving out names. Yeah, yeah. I did see that. I did see that because there was a a Twitter poll asking what, what they wanted it to be. Oh, and there was only four choices on the Twitter poll, but one of them was, that the, the casting announcement would be that Will Will DeVry is renewed, and that was what the majority of people voted That's for. Awesome. So I don't know. Is that a casting announcement? If he's just on the bubble, I don't know. He's on the bubble. But Will Will isn't coming forward. He says he he's still in discussion. So I'm wondering. Right, but at least he confirmed. He did confirm that there is discussion because he said I can't remember how he said it. Like the, it's still steaming. The kettle is still hot. It was some kind of heat metaphor. I can't remember now what it was. So, 
Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. Weird. I don't want him to leave, but I'm hoping Shelly can repair Julexis. Oh, yeah. If it's all possible. If it's all possible. Yeah. Make if it viable. I, yeah, people are back and forth on it because it all comes down to the knife at the neck thing, you know. It's like if he hadn't held the knife to her neck, the one that killed her mother, it might have been a little more forgivable. But that was, you know, kind of the tipping point for a lot of people. Yeah, I see. So we're going to know tomorrow what it is. Uh, some of the other choices on the Twitter poll were announcing that Serena Baldwin – is going to stick around. That was another one. I hope that, so. That was that was just on that was just on the poll. That doesn't mean it's is one of the Ranked options. It was just they them. were. Yeah, they were just doing um, basically just doing a, a poll. And Will Devry was the one that everybody was hoping for you know, based on the poll, which is completely non-scientific and all that good stuff. So uh, mm. it would be interesting. I mean, he, okay, actually, here's the, the other thing that's been kicking around. Is that kid Oscar? Yeah. Because he, he, he keeps talking about his mother doesn't like to talk about his father, and he didn't grow up around his father. His mother raised him alone. They gave his last name as Nero uh, yesterday. Last name is yesterday. Nero? Nero. Uh, Nero. Oscar Nero. And I went and I looked in the lexicon of char- characters and no, there's no Nero. And the only Oscar that pops up is Brenda Barrett's father. Father or grandfather. So there there is some scuttlebutt. Oscar. No, Har- Brenda's father's name was Harlan. Oh, uh, well, maybe it was her grandfather. It was someone in her... Maybe it was her grandfather. And I, yeah, it was someone in, in Brenda's family chain that was an Oscar. I will look it up because there were, there were a fair amount of Barrett's. Um, and she had that son, Janicek. Yeah, she had that little boy. Alec Janicek, um, yeah. Well, why would they change his... And, and this, you you know, this is what... one of those wild rumors... That it, I mean, that honestly, I hope. I honestly hope it's not her, and I hope that's not the casting announcement. I I don't care for Vanessa Marcel. Um, not, not not as an actress, she's great. She is kind of mean to her fans on social media. Like the the stuff. I don't know if you ever, you know, looked at her IG and her Twitter, but she's she's not always polite to people to fans who, you know, so, and she's, she said recently some disparaging things about Laura Wright, basically not about Laura Wright, but about Carly basically saying, you know, that bitch doesn't know how to take care of a man. I can't remember the exact wording, but it was pretty out there. Mm. And, And I just, I, I, you know, I didn't like the attitude. So she's busy opening a taco stand with her family. Um, <laughs> so, but it, you know, we have heard the mother name dropped. Um, we don't know who the father is. Um, I know this. Sonny Corinthos does not need another kid. He's no. fathered half of Port Charles. The first kid they brought in to play Oscar Rio Mangini, who left after two episodes. Yeah. He had the look, you know, he could be Sonny's kid, he could be Dante's kid. It would be really weird if Dante just got a random extra kid right after Lulu got a random extra kid. That's because Dante Dante was involved with Brenda when that was his... 
he was her bodyguard. Yeah. But I remember there was some stuff saying that they weren't really, but he lied and said they were to try to cover up for some, I don't with these writers, they could make it anything. They could make it that they had a full blown affair. Um yeah, so and you know, Brenda and Carly are rivals and yeah. the the Bring one the, drama the sole reason Yeah, well also the sole reason that Brenda and Sonny are not together is the mob. Brenda refused yeah. to be a mob wife and walked out on him and he's getting out. That obstacle is about to be gone. Mm. And that was oh. you know, they have said yeah, they have said, oh, they're soulmates and stuff. And if Brenda cruised into town and that's Sonny's kid because the writers invented it, you know. I mean, he he's around the right age to be Alec, but he doesn't have to be. He could just be a random kid she left pregnant with. Him. You know, it's a soap opera. Yeah, uh, true. Um, and him getting out of the mob and, you know, they have that electric chemistry. So we'll find out tomorrow. Um, it, in as much as with Sonny and his exiting the mob storyline, it would be a very interesting time for Brenda to come back if they were going to bring her back. It would. So. Yeah, it, it would. would. But it, it, and it may just be Frank saying, we'll stick it around, you know. Or it might be Frank at the grocery store running into somebody else. I do love when he did that with Michael Easton. So. <laughs> Frank's pretty good about trying to keep the lid on things. Oh yeah, yeah, they they definitely try to. So I'm um, interested to see what uh, what comes up, and if it is a big thing, or if it's another thing like James DePiva, and it's like a random person. You know, we'll see whether we'll it comes see. out or not. Yeah. So and. The other big thing I'm looking that at Frank, you see it? No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, um, reportedly it said that there are more plans for your All My Children and One Life to Live cameo is coming. Yeah. I've, been, I've definitely been expecting that because Nathan Barney – did um, a podcast in February or March, and he said that they would keep doing it when and where it made sense. Right. They, I, which, I, they've had gets us, ring, uh, which gets us hope, gives us some hope. I mean, it's good. It's yeah. good to see them. I mean, we don't need them. Uh, I suppose. I, I'm just a general soap fan, and I'd appreciate anything. But I know that there are right. diehard GHs that only want to see GH people on GH. And you know, I'm not. If they do it right, the thing is, it's fine. Factors. Yeah. That, that's how I see it. I mean, um, it's just well, would would they would they be more upset if it was they were their character from another soap because that stuff happens, or would it be if they mm. if their the actor is a new character altogether? To me, I don't see the difference. I enjoy it either way. I'm back to if it's done well, then it's then it's good. I think they've had a mixed bag with this. Like the Hillary B. Smith thing that I mentioned earlier, I thought was, was pretty flawless. I yeah. thought they did it well. They did a good arc. They kept her the same. They stayed true to her character. It was flawless. Yeah. Then they did Alex Merrick, and it was a hot, steaming pile of crap. Because she they don't probably know it. She was well. No, that's the thing. Uh, Shelley Altman wrote that character. 
she invented that character and all my children. She invented that? and all my children. No, I Alice didn't. Merritt. No, I'm yeah. not familiar with the character. I did not know that. Yeah, th- I, I didn't know it either, and uh, I was I was tweeting and chattering with some other soap peeps, and someone pinged pinged me back with that, and I was like, holy crap, maybe it was on Facebook. And I went and looked, because they both worked at All My Children. They know the All My yeah. Children characters in history. They know them better than they know General Hospital. <laughs> Because they worked over there, and they were architects of the history. So what what was really funny was that, yeah, and then when General Hospital tweeted, oh, introducing the villainous Alex, you know, Devane Merrick, and it's like, she wasn't a villain. She was brainwashed by Charlotte, and then, you know, she got a little cranial reset, and then she was fine. She saved Anna's life, and they were close, and then she moved off to... Budapest and was a doctor and then all of a sudden she's this thing with all this history and so I, I didn't like them calling her a villain and I yeah so I, I thought that one was not so great and then this James DePiva thing I, I don't see that they're going anywhere phenomenal with it but I could be wrong maybe he's going to tie hope into they do. the new Steve Burton plot yeah, I mean, maybe he's there for a reason, and maybe he well, is Steve Burton's new character. Who knows? Yeah, he could. I mean, when they do that, I thought they would bring him back as Max. Yeah, right. And then he's this bench guy, which, again, I'm back to worse than yeah. ever. That's right. They were Dr. Chair. It's just horrible. <laughs> it's like, why would you do this? Uh, I'm hoping uh, it's a fake name. <laughs> maybe he's in witness protection. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. That could I that could actually be. Yeah, that's what I I'm could, hoping I could go for that one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, so I guess next week we'll get to talk about Frank's big casting announcement and I, I do hope it's big. I tend to think it has something to do with Oscar. Hmm. Because they've been name dropping his mom pretty actively and that means they need to have cast her or brought her back you know I I flipped around thinking I did a lot of uh, actually a fair amount of research on this because I was hoping that he might be Jagger's kid but um, Antonio Sabato is running for Congress and yeah I think the the mom yeah. of his kid ran off, and he raised the kid, and you know. Jagger's kid, that would. He that had, would he had be the right good. Look. Yeah, and he had the right look, and then they mentioned, you know, when the whole thing about Michael Sutton coming back, because we're going to see him, I think, like right. Friday, Monday, somewhere in there. I was just hoping that Oscar was was a a Kate. Yeah. So we'll see. I mean, I. Oh yeah, no. I think Sonny's got to get a lot worse. He's still wandering around his hole. There, I think Garvey is supposed to come back, or crawl over. I think he's still there, shot whatever, and throw a tarp over the hole. Um. To obscure where he is, because Sonny's got that that whole thing with the claustrophobia, because his wicked stepdad, you know, oh, would lock yeah, him in the yeah. closet. Yeah, yeah, because right now he's not he's in a confined space, but he's not in the dark. But you put Sonny in like a dark confined space, and then he starts to really go back crap crazy. And uh, Garvey's mm-hmm. supposed to throw a tarp over the space and leave him there, and then Sonny's supposed to unravel, and then as he's unraveling, that's when Stone shows up, Ghost Stone, who, you know, as a ghost, should be the same age person, but he's, you know, aging. <laughs> he's in his 40s now, so. And he died when he was, what, like, yes. 20, 24? <laughs> but I'll uh, let it go, because I like Michael that. Yeah, you like the age thing. Well, he yeah, would well, be... I, it's funny. Older than well, Robin. Robin's actually, well, Kimberly's. Kimberly's forty. 
she's yeah, she's I'm early forties. Pretty sure. I think I think Michael I think Michael Sutton is mid forties, right around there. Oh. You know. Yeah, so he's it's just you remember him so young, and you know he's actually a Beverly Hills realtor. So it's funny, you know, every because I think he was last seen in like 2010, maybe around there, yeah. and then they call him up and they're like, "Hey, can you take a take a day off selling luxury homes and come to the set?" He's like, "Okay," and he comes over. <laughs> so that's nice that he does it, you know, because he's not even in the business anymore. He isn't. But no, he's a he's realtor. Not. He oh. is a he does up. Upscale Beverly, yeah, he's a Beverly Hills successful Beverly Hills realtor and has been for a while. Yeah, some of these people are are pretty much you know out. Tanya Walker was out when they brought her back. She had stepped back to raise her kids she and no had realtor. just started. She wasn't a realtor, no. She uh, she was writing. I can't remember what what she was doing, but she was writing. keeping herself busy. Yeah, she was doing, but she wasn't doing anything with acting. And then she had just started to think about it because her um, her youngest was in her last year of high school. And then she ran into Frank at an event, and he uh, and he talked to her about it. She's like, "Yeah, I could come back to work." So it's interesting the the way these things, because you know Steve Burton was kind of out after he left Y and R, and then he said he was at the right. Emmys and he got locked out. He went out the wrong door and got locked out of the theater <laughs> and oh. ran into ran into a yeah, guy I remember and said, do you have, Yeah, and then he the, the guy said, Do you have an agent? And he was like, No, not really and he was like, You should call me and then so he was like, Yeah, and he called him and so he's got a lot of irons in the fire. Mm, I still don't know how, yeah, you never how he's got know. time to Yeah, yeah. I mean and it may be one of those incremental returns where he's back and he's lurking and, you know, who knows. So we'll see. We'll see when we see. We shall see. Well, I'm so. I'm a, I'm a, I think I, my, my news well might be dry. <laughs> oh my God. You have a dry well. I have a dry. I think we we have we have we have tapped all of it. I even talked about some stuff I haven't even written yet that I'm planning to write this week. But oh oh no, wait. Do we have about a Disney about a about a wedding announcement? Um, I don't have a wedding announcement. Do we have a I day? Have a, a return. Um, no no. What a uh, which wedding? Justin and Chriselle's wedding. Oh, do you have the date? Did they announce? They, they, I don't know. I heard. You didn't see it? Uh, no. No, I didn't. They were on I can look now. this show with the chef. I can't remember. And I believe that she mentioned October. Yeah. Oh, here. Um, hmm. Do you have it? Well, actually, no. It's kind of funny because there was something from 2016 that said he revealed his wedding date, and I'm like wondering, have they? Yeah. Uh, they thought it was. It they, was in April. They said April. Some people. Yeah. Like but she recently revealed it. It was. It was Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, it yeah, was Gordon um, Ramsay. It was Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. No, what crossed my mind, I'm still looking for the date, was I actually think I might know what the casting announcement is. Um, oh, no. Unless there's more than one. Yeah. Uh, Ashley Johnson is coming back to GH as Christina. I mean, as a, as Parker to get busy with Christina. Oh, Ashley Jones. Yes, Ashley Jones. Did I say Johnson? Uh, Ashley. Yeah, I'm working without my notes. Ashley Jones is coming back as Parker. So that may be the casting hmm. announcement. I actually, for it was sitting on my brain's back burner, and I forgot to put it on my list 
because there's been, you know, ongoing spoilers that Christina was going to have her love interest this summer, and it was going to be a, a same-sex thing. And then there's been, you know, speculation, like they were wondering if it was going to be Amy, because Christina yeah. and Amy are roommates, and Christina Christina seems to, to really like Amy. And uh, so, yeah, there was that whole question, but no, it is Ashley Johnson is coming back. Now, that may not be what the announcement is, but that is casting news that hasn't, you know, made big headlines yet. So... Hmm. Might we'll be see keeping what Frank it says tomorrow. Right. Yeah, it could be Will, Will's contract renewal, although that's not casting news because he's already cast. And technically Ashley has come and gone, but that would I would still consider that casting news. You know, because she's not even recurring. So but yep, maybe it's Ashley. We'll hmm. find out tomorrow and then we'll get to talk about it next time. Yep, we can. Yep. So, so now, n- now my well is dry. <laughs> now your well is dry. So before well we dry. hang up, mm-hmm. before we hang up, I want to say, do you, why don't we have everyone tune in tomorrow for Take to Radio Soaps and Review, and you'll have me and this lovely lady that I'm talking to on the other end of the phone, Miss Belinda, will be one of the co-hosts. We'll have Casey Stephen Hutchinson and Carolyn Jenkins, and we're all going to dish the soaps. That's tomorrow. That is tomorrow night at seven o'clock. Please tune in and watch and listen and call in one seven one eight five zero six fifteen forty and press one. And then Belinda is busy. <laughs> so, do you want to tell them what's happening Friday night? Friday night at 8 p.m. is our Big Brother 19 recap show, and we're talking all the stuff that's going on. Uh, Last Friday, we were on live during the Battle Back. This Friday, uh, 8 p.m., we'll be recapping the entire week, and we should have some spoilers on the HOH comp and stuff like that. But, yeah, we're talking Big Brother and we're we're digging into the dirt, we're digging into the live feeds that if you don't if you're not a live feedster, we'll fill you in on that scoop and it's very exciting. Um you can find me on Twitter at Belinda G T B E L Y N D A G T and you can see all my Big Brother stuff. I just did a really fun piece on Raven Walton in the Big Brother house. Is she lying or is she dying? Uh <laughs> everyone seems to be polarized on that. So we'll talk about that and all the action about Paul and Cody and everybody tomorrow night. I mean, uh, Friday night at 8 p.m. right here on Take Two Radio. Friday night. And and have Two Radio presents. Have you heard? We'll be back on August the 9th. When and I'll be with Belinda and hopefully Michael will. Michael Thomas will be joining us. Until then, do you want to? Yeah. Do you want? Do you have a final message that you would like uh, my, to? My my final message. My final yeah. message, as always, is watch your soaps. Please watch them legally. <laughs> it doesn't count if you're watching them off off a link. Uh, I hate that. The, you know, I know the Facebook groups love to share them. Please don't share them, and please don't watch them off of that. Please get subscribe to the apps. You know, there's ABC Live, there's NBC Live, there's CBS All Access. Um, get basic cable, get an antenna, you know, <laughs> watch legally, and uh, our soaps will survive longer. And and I just heard, I don't know if you heard this, but NBC has brought Days of Our Lives on demand. Ah. I did not. That's exciting. It's That's I knew I forgot that day's news, but and so, when um, 
that effective now? I think I think so. I have well, to check, gonna... but I will get back to you on that one. And everybody um, well, else. I'm gonna get my yeah, I'm going to get my my Comcast remote and check right now because that's been one of my barriers to to staying current uh, and watching older stuff. So yay! Hey, isn't that great? All right. So that's wonderful. Nick. So until tomorrow night, until tomorrow night, Belinda and I will see you. And see you thank then. you for joining me tonight. I, I've had so much fun with you. I got to tell. <laughs> Great. Thank you, David. I had so much fun, too. And we'll uh, we'll talk soaps again tomorrow. Okay. You got it. Good night, right, everybody. See you then. Good night. See you then. Connected with Take Two Radio on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio. For email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit TakeTwoRadio.com.